Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. It is deceptively cool today. The sun is shining, but it's the low 50s, and it's been really cool, and the bees are chippy, but this is the reason we're getting into hives this time of the year, and that's a piece of ice, so if that shows you how cold it is. Tennessee cold. I know it's not as cold as it is up north, but check this hive out right here. It's a good hive. Look at all these bees right here. There's a decent bit of weight in the top box. Some of the colonies, I'm feeding sugar syrup today, even though it's the low 50s. The weather forecast is going to be in the 60s and 70s later this month, uh, week, excuse me. And check this out right here. Swarm cells. They're just starting them. These are about two to three days old, and there's one queen cell. Let me get a hive tool. And look at that royal jelly right there. So this hive is gearing up to swarm. It was getting down to like 19, 18 degrees Fahrenheit the last couple of nights. It was chilly and it was getting very cool in the day. So it's still like freezing temperatures. Strong hives like this, it doesn't matter. So what are we gonna do in this situation? Let's show you. Now we try to keep the colonies from getting to this point because Getting to the point where they're wanting to swarm like this and they're building queen cells means that if we had pulled them back a week or so ago, this wouldn't have happened. We just have not kept up and the weather hasn't been super cooperative. Honestly, I wish it was about 10 to 15 degrees warmer, but we still have to get in here and get this work done because if we wait, these queen cells will be capped and it'll be really wanting to swarm heavily. We can fix this. So we've got to get down in here. We've got to make sure we eliminate every one of those queen cells. So I've got my two gallon frame feeder over here and we're just gonna go ahead and pop that on out so we have a little bit of room to work with. Just place that over here. And we have to check like every frame because they could put a swarm cell on the side of one. So this is gonna be a pain in the rear end. This hive seems to be pretty gentle so I'm gonna remove the gloves but there are some of the hives today that just are not liking this weather and it's nice when it's this cool because when it's only like 52 degrees outside mm -hmm. you can wear a full bee suit and it doesn't really heat you up at all so there's a good bit of food down in here i'm not seeing mm -hmm. anything in regards to uh swarm cells or anything like that we'll need to shake this off i really would like to identify where the queen's at the queen is definitely still in here though. They're not, they haven't swarmed out yet. Hmm. Look at those bees moving. Oh, there she is. She's got a, some of her dot eaten away. But she is right there looking really good. And so <clears throat> there's not a lot of swarm stimuli and presence going on in this colony because we're not seeing swarm cells all over the place. This is early stages. Very easy to fix. We're going to leave this queen down in here. Not going to be a problem at all. So I want to show you what we're going to do now that we've found the queen. We know we have some swarm cells <clears throat> being developed. This is an ideal situation. If you're going to see the colony starting to swarm. This is a perfect time to catch it. That queen still really wants to lay. Only some of the bees have committed to the swarm stimuli. So we have got to reduce the population. We've got to open up the brood nest a little bit. And we got to make sure that we crush every single cell. So the queen is on this frame right here. 
And boy, some people say that when you have wax dip boxes, you don't get as much propolis or bee glue, you know, built up in your colonies. That is fiddle faddle right there. I've never noticed even a slight reduction with having wax dip boxes and propolis production. All right, now what we want to do is just inspect all of these frames down in here. The queen did not have any swarm cells on that frame. And we are going to pull bees from the top box. And now that we know where the queen's at, I was looking through all these frames right here. We are good on these combs. I haven't checked these three right here. So we're just going to, this is where a bee suit really comes in handy. There's nothing in regards to a swarm cell. Likely there's not one on either one of these two, but I'm gonna check this frame right here and uh, not check the edge comb. It's really not that strong yet. It would be good to go ahead and check it to be safe. This is a frame of bee bread, which is typical. Tons of bee bread down in there. There's no brood. There's gonna be no brood on that next frame over. If the swarming impulse was really strong, I would check every frame and I normally do. It would be better to check every single one of them, but we're good right now. So this bottom box has no frames that have any queen cells on it. And now what we're gonna do is decide what we're going to pull and shake from this colony. If you'll excuse me, Laurel. So as we go through the bee yard, we grab frames of brood and shakes of bees. This has about three shakes of bees and one frame of brood. And so I'm gonna shake this off in here. This, is, this has some okay brood. I'm not seeing any signs of swarm cells on this at all and it has some emerging bees so we're just going to go ahead and add all of that. We're going to shake this down into here. There is no queen cells on this frame. I'm going to drop this down in here. And this is why a lot of the commercial beekeepers and beekeepers that are shaking packages, making up nukes, doing a lot of stuff very fast with pollination, they wear bee suits because you can't take your time like Cayman Reynolds can in a YouTube video on one hive on the, the perfect day. You have to be a little bit rough to get through hundreds of colonies and all that kind of stuff. In some days, it doesn't matter how gentle you are, they're just going to be very thrilled to see you. So here we are with some of the swarm cells. And we've crushed a few of them already. And there we are right there with another one. Very, very early stages. We'll shake those bees off. Make sure we don't miss any. And just go ahead and flatten this queen cup right there. I'm pretty sure it was empty. But it's better to be safe than sorry that there's not an egg down in there. And again, we are just going to cut the population back. Make them feel like they've already swarmed a little bit. And then we're going to open some room for that queen up top. And I'll show you how in a minute. So we have got our bottom box down to 10 again. Gonna smoke these bees down really good. And definitely make sure that all the frames get pushed back together. So we don't, when you're running 10 frames, you definitely want to make sure those frames get pushed back evenly together. And while we're here, we'll just go ahead and scrape this up a little bit. Oh goodness. We are going to throw this second box back on top. This frame is food so that's going to go to the edge this frame is brood and this would be yes so look down in here we have emerging brood over here the queen has come back probably where they emerged out of the center and now you have some 
really nice brood being developed, some young larvae and some calf brood in the center. And you have all this drone brood down into here, and this is where a lot of the queen cells are going to be. So we can go ahead and scrape that and eliminate any spot for them to raise some queens. And that looks pretty good right there. So I'm going to put all the brood back into the center of this top box because we want them to stay warm, but there's plenty of bees for now. I'm going to shake that off. That's empty, mostly food on this side. So another frame of food right there. This is where we're going to pull the rest. So we have eggs and larvae. And calf brood over here. We have a lot more of these queen cells down into here. And as some of you may actually find to your dismay that some of the drones down at the bottom are getting killed in the process of doing this. You don't have to do that. Um, I choose to do it for multiple reasons. It, it makes it to where there's not so much bridging between these frames and the bottom comb. So when I go to work the bees, it's not uh, quite as uh, difficult. I don't end up crushing things um, or making the bees upset. Uh, then on top of that, uh, they're going to have to start completely afresh to raise some queen cells and losing a few drones actually might eliminate some varroa mites in the process. So we're going to put this frame of brood right here. We're almost shaking a package out of this thing. So we're going to take this frame. This is a lot of larvae right here. We're going to do the same thing. Just let on that down. Put that brood in the center. And now we've pulled one frame of brood and a lot of shakes of bees. Here's another really good frame of calf brood and emerging brood. Um, we are going to take this frame absolutely. And the reason I'm shaking them in is making sure that there's no queen cells that I've missed either uh, on these frames because I don't want a queen emerging out in any of the splits that I might make up. We're not to our honey flow yet. We still have a couple weeks to go. And this colony definitely will swarm between now and then if we don't make them feel like we've cut them back. So, shake a few more bees off. This is food. Another frame of food here. So we have two, six frames up here. Typically with a frame feeder we have eight. We pulled the population back a good bit. We're going to have to pull them back again before we put on the honey supers. We are going to go ahead and add a couple of frames. So here's some good combs. Combs are king. Which means it's almost as good as a good queen. And I am going to stick these next to the food. We got food here, we got food here. Just like to, I just like to go ahead and trim these back down because they can get built out and I lose my accurate space. But this colony now has really taken a population hit immediately. It's going to take a brood hit from those two frames of emerging brood that we have swiped. So this is going to have some lasting effects. However, I am definitely going to come back in here within the week, five days from now, and, and just double check and see if they've started building cells out again. I'm going to go ahead and put this back in here. So I just like to store them in here. And we should be good. We'll come back again soon. And then before the honey flow, we'll cut them back down to a single. I'm going to have to do some editing anyways. Okay. Keep going. So I think we finished it up really good. To summarize, basically this was a great catch. They were very early on, maybe six or seven swarm cells at the most, all in this upper box hanging down. The queen was laying good. 
good population. We took at least four or five frames worth of bees and shook them in. We took two frames of brood, so this is going to really affect the dynamics of the population. They're going to feel like they've reproduced already. We've added a couple combs in here to give the queen more room to lay. I mean, even if she doesn't lay in these, they can move food out of her way and allow her more room to lay. So uh, we're going to come back in five days, double check that they have gotten rid of that stimuli tendency, and then we're going to cut them back down to a single before the honey flow here in a couple weeks and add supers. And that, that last cut should keep them from swarming and get them to focus on the stimuli of long-term storage and long-term thoughts. So anyways, thanks for this video. No, you're, thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one. Huh.